Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I want to talk about something a little more controversial, a little more, um, just starting to kind of get some stuff off um, my chest, things that I tweeted about the other day, and kind of just talk about stuff that I see in this industry and just things to watch out for for you guys and explain my reasoning. Um, so yeah, let's let's get right to it. Okay, first and foremost, couple housekeeping things. This Sunday, um, uh, December 12th in Chicago at the Rosemont Dome, which is right literally near the end of the runway at O'Hare. Uh, I'll be having my last Punt Factory camp of the year. <clears throat> so 8 to 1 p.m. at the Rosemont Dome this Sunday uh, in Chicago. Have a good group going. To clarify something, we are doing it at the exact same time and date uh, that Chris, Saylor, and uh, Rubio are doing their camps. The dome is massive. Um, we should have obviously plenty of space. You can punt in there, which is great. Um, but yeah, the reason we're doing that is just because uh, getting up to Chicago anytime in the fall uh, is obviously difficult. And so um, Sailor was able to rent the dome and we're gonna kind of share the field with him. So um, it's a complete different registration, complete different camp. We're just doing it at the same place. So one of the questions I always get is, can I go back and forth? Um, no, because you're obviously registering for one of the camps. So, um, you know, we do hop in, we have hopped in before when uh, his camp, the kicking camp is punted. The punters have gone over to compete a little bit, but for the most part, they are still two separate camps just being held in the same spot. So that's that. Number two, congratulations to Jesse Ehrlich, uh, who committed to Cal Poly last night on scholarship. Uh, one of my young Australian kids, uh, he just graduated high school within the last couple weeks. Um, in Australia, they go to school from February to December. So, um, you know, he just graduated. He's going to sign soon, and then he'll be coming over in, uh, I believe, summer, so June, July, to start work here. So congratulations to Jesse. That's a big get for our program. And obviously for Cal Poly, Jesse's a, a, a stud lefty punter. So you guys check him out. I'll put his at somewhere on here so you guys can follow him on Twitter and Instagram, et cetera. Um, but yeah, so that's about it. Why I really wanted to make this video is to kind of just talk about some stuff that I tweeted about the other day. I'm going to try and keep it as simple and honest as I can. Um, I'm not here to cause controversy. I'm not here to, um, you know, call people out. But, I mean, I guess I kind of am. But in reality, man, um, the industry's gotten real crazy, right? Um, I think for guys that are just coming out and trying to become coaches now, I, I do think there's a, a great and big need for young coaches that are passionate. Um, an example being Isaac Parks, Punt Factory Carolinas, who I brought on to the Punt Factory uh, brand and staff to kind of represent my brand. I could see from a very very early time that he was super eager to uh, coach. To, he was passionate about it. He loved working with guys and he's been a success. He's been awesome. You know, Isaac is a good example of young coaches. I know there's others around the country that do a great job. And uh, the difference is for me is that those guys are so young and so naive that all they know how to do is coach. They just want to coach and they want to help. Where it becomes a problem is when it becomes about being self-centered, okay, for lack of a better word. If you guys come to one of my camps, you know, um, or if you work with me, you know that I'm very honest. Uh, number one, I rarely bring out the stopwatch to a training session. Um, I don't think success is measured in hang time and distance, which is weird because I, ultimately it is. You know, coaches want to see how high and far you can kick the ball, right? But w my job when you're paying for a session is to coach you, is to make you better, so that those distances and hang times over time and in the future get you know further and higher. Me bringing out a stopwatch, you know, immediately puts an idea in your head that we're going to measure success on how high the ball goes. When I came out in 2008, 2009, you know, the whole thing was hit a 45-0, 44-8, and you're good, right? If it goes 38 fair caught, you're good. The game has evolved, right? Um, now with rollouts and drop punts and, and rugby style and stuff, I mean, some of the averages you see across the board at the college level are absolutely mind boggling. I mean, they're ludicrous, right? It's crazy. This year specifically, there was two or three guys that average over 50, which is again, unheard of. I mean, even four or five years ago. And I watched some of them and for the love of God, they're hitting big punts. Um, you watch others and they're, they're playing keep away from the returner, right? Um, it all works. It all works. The goal is for any team to just kick the ball away from the returner and help their team create better field position for their defense. And there are, what we found out is there's many ways to do that, right? 
So my job as a coach, essentially at the level that I'm predominantly coaching at with the young guys is to help them figure out how best that they can do that, right? So whether they're not strong uh, traditional spiral punters, can I help them on their rollouts and their footwork for that and how they drop it? And what's the difference between a drop punt rollout and a spiral rollout? What's the difference between a long rollout, right? And a short rollout where they're just, you know, kicking back across their body, et cetera. Um, that's my job. My job is not to, uh, you know, make you think you're better than you are, make you think you're worse than you are, it, than you are. It's to be honest and to evaluate, right? Um, to give you feedback and things to work on. A couple of tweets I put out the other day, just about, you know, lying about hang times. The truth is that to me is one of the single handed worst things that you can do to a young kid is lying about progress. Okay. There's a difference between me saying, Hey, um, a young buck like Aiden Flintoff, when we started working, I think you could potentially be great. I think it could be awesome, right? I, I see things in you having done this long enough that I think you could be very good, but it's going to take X, Y, Z. It's going to take a month. It's going to take a lot of drops. Um, and that kid can do one of two things, right? They can go out and they can do the things that I'm telling them I think that they should do. Uh, they can implement that into their routines. They can lift properly, eat properly, sleep properly, train properly, go to the right camps, be, you know, put themselves around the right group of people to be involved with or they can take that, let it go to the head, not put in the work and eventually not reach their full potential. And by no means am I saying that I'm the only one that can gauge that potential. Um, but I use Aiden as an example, because if you would have seen his first couple lessons, again, he was a young sophomore, um, wasn't concerned about ranking or anything. You know, he, all he was concerned about is teach me how to do this. He then took the advice that we gave, that I gave him that I thought would work. He freaking lifts his butt off. He trains his butt off. He, he did everything right, and now he's the number one punter in the country, right? So in class of 2023, does it happen like that for everybody? Absolutely not, but I'm giving an example. My job was to give him feedback, tell him I thought he could be a very, very good punter, and then see how he takes it, and then continue on that journey with him if he chooses to keep going. Me telling Aiden, you know, our first two sessions, oh man, 4-8 when it was a 4-4, 4-4 if it was a 4-0. First of all, for a young sophomore in high school who's six foot, 150 pounds, a 4-0, 4-1 is a great ball, right? If if he hits a 4-2-5 as his best punt, that means he still hit his best punt. It doesn't mean that, oh, you could have done better, and I need to say, oh, 4-4, four, four, and now Aiden think No, a 4-2-5 is a good ball, right? If you even if you're a high school senior, you're an you know average height, so six foot, 175 pounds, and your best punt is a 4-5-5. Five, five. That's the best you've ever hit. First of all, if we hit a four, five, eight, a four, six, if we hit one and the whole session, it still means that you're capable of doing that. You're a beast. That's, that's great. Relative to yourself, that's awesome. But if you hit a bunch of four threes, that's really good considering where your ceiling is and what you're hitting. That's good, man. And that's honest feedback, right? And that's, that's telling you where you're at. And so then we can take that and say, okay, do you really want to pursue this? All right, well, we need to get stronger. We need to be able to increase that a little bit. But from where you are right now, um, that's probably not a high FBS level punt. But if we target the right schools, there are schools that would take a kid that hits a bunch of four threes with good direction and say, yeah, we can work with that. Let us put eight, 10, 20 pounds on the kid over the next two years and develop him. And a good coach can take you and, and reach your full potential. But me telling that kid whose best punt's a four five, that he hits that four five and it's a four eight. Let me tell you something. That's the dumbest shit. That's the dumbest thing that you can do. That's wrong. That's it's lying. First of all, you're being untruthful. And number two, that kid now goes home and puts on his social media. I hit a four eight today, let alone me out yelling out uh, four eight five, five oh, and it's a four seven four seven five and it's a four five three. So now that young man goes home, puts it on his social media, tags me. You can blatantly hear me say four, five, six, four, six, five. And it was, you clock it, you, you're like, dang, that's a good ball. I didn't know that kid could hit one five oh like that. He's a freaking junior. Clock it, it's not a five oh, it's a four seven. Hmm. Okay. That's not a four seven, that's a four four. So now I've now put that kid in a predicament where he goes home, puts it out there. It's a reflection of me and it's a reflection of him. Let's just say I was potentially recruiting him. In my opinion, that's that's a big red flag. I'm like, this kid doesn't, he's putting posting the wrong hang time. He's lying about his progress. Can I trust anything this kid says? Furthermore, I've enabled that kid. I've 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 told him in so many ways that it's okay for him to go out and put that down. That's not fair to that kid. That's not fair to those parents who are putting the trust in me, in you, 
to accurately give them feedback of where their young man is. They're paying several hundred dollars to come out for me to lie about how high the ball went. Now the kid goes home and puts it out, and now this kid's thinking, man, I'm hitting fives, I'm hitting four sevens. Dang, man, two weeks ago, I was only hitting four fours. I was only hitting four threes. I, dang, that tra training session I did with you must have worked because I'm hitting four. It's, it's bull It sucks. So I want you guys to take, and as you can tell, I'm pretty fired up. Uh, this is a subject I've tweeted about before. Um, I'm just trying to get some stuff off my, off my chest with this. So the industry is now an arms race with some of these guys to get the most kids to like them, not to be honest with the most amount of kids, right? Um, I tell you guys all the time, uh, I, I, with me in charge of, uh, you know, being director of, of punting with, with Sailor, you know, a big, well-recognized brand, you know, one of the under promise over deliver, right? It should be hard to be five stars. It should be hard to be this. And I know there's a lot of high rank stuff out there. Um, and, and we are very aware of that and trying to make it something to where yet again, it gets hard to be separated from the rest. If you are one of the best, it should be known, right? And by the way, if you're not, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to not have to be five stars, top 10. It's okay. If that's your goal, great. I'll help you get there, but I'm going to be honest with you about where you are on that journey. Telling you that you are better than you are serves one person, and that's me. That serves me when I tell you a 4.5 is a 4.8, a 4.4 is a 4.7, a 4.7 is a 5.0. That doesn't serve you. In fact, that hurts you. You go home with a false sense of improvement, a false sense of reality, a false sense of where you are. You put it out there, and it doesn't take... Joe Schmo with a stopwatch to go, that wasn't it, that wasn't it, that wasn't it. And when you see it time and time again, it just frustrates me, man. So maybe this was a venting session for me. Maybe this is being a little more real with you guys than um, some of you guys want to be, or maybe it makes some of you uncomfortable to hear. But at the end of the day, the truth is you need to time your own hang times. You need to do it yourself with a stopwatch, not Google watch, um, stopwatch, get it out, be critical right? If, if you clock it five times and you keep getting between four, five, eight and four, six, two, take the average, take four, five, nine, four, six, right? Um, if you have any issues with that, send it to me. Don't send me a hundred clips a day, bro. I'm not going to do that. But if there's a couple of good balls you hit and you feel like you want to put that on uh, your business card, which is your social media, and you want to put that out there, send it to me and I'll time, time it for you when I get a chance, right? Don't expect it within the next five minutes, man. Um, but I'll help you. Okay, because send it to Isaac, he'll help you. I trust Isaac, okay? Um, but some of the shit that I see, man, that's not giving this industry a good name. And, and I know there's a lot of things wrong with every industry. There's a lot of good things. Private coaching is hard. You have to make a name for yourself. You have to become trusted. You have to become responsible. You have to become, I always say this, you guys are my resume, right? So it does no good to me in reality if I lie about that to make my resume better. That's like lying on a resume. If I go try to apply a job at a nice investment firm and I say that I've worked five years and I've managed just me portfolios and I've only managed two and by investment firm I meant I worked at, you know, Subway, whatever, that's lying. And eventually that comes out. So make of it what you guys will. Just be very weary of when, you know, you're at home hitting four threes, four fours. All of a sudden you go somewhere and you're hitting four eights and four nines, four sevens. Be honest with yourself. I promise it'll pay off in the long run. There are a lot of good coaches, honest coaches in the industry. There's a lot. And I kind of think eventually it's at the point where I need to, and some of us need to start kind of calling out some of the crap that we see, um, even if it's something that I've done. You know what I mean? Like I need to be honest about what it is. Um, you know, I want to make another video about this. I see all the time these, you know, the attacks on ranking camps. Man, come on. Like that's just such an easy BS thing to do. And I want to talk about it. And I think that it's just important. And I think it's good to be honest about our industry. I love what I do. Uh, I believe in what we do. I believe in, in the companies that I work with. I believe in eva honest evaluations of kids. Um, I believe in giving feedback. And most importantly, I believe in being a good coach. Yeah, I, I feel good about what I'm doing and what who the people I surround myself and, and interact with, what, what they're doing as well. So again, if you disagree, great, let me know. Um, you can text me, you can call me. Uh, if you agree, great, you know, maybe you see it as well. But it just got, it got on my heart, man. It got, it pissed me off. So I just had to kind of come on a vent or a little around here and kind of explain a little bit more about that tweet and why I think it hurts that kid and why I think it's just a bunch of BS. That's it, that's what I had to say. I'll be in Chicago this weekend. I'll be in Nashville for the holidays. 
Um, I'll make a video soon about the pre-draft. Uh, maybe I did already, but I will uh, be in NorCal for 10 days at the end of January, and we'll go from there. So, oh, in Vegas, boom, Vegas. I got to book my tickets for that um, to get out there. But I'm excited. Uh, 2022 is going to be a big year. I'll be releasing my camp schedule sometime in the next month or so, um, just kind of trying to figure out you know, where I want to go, what I want to do. But massive thanks to everyone. I'm excited to wrap up the year. And again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, text me. 2,000 subscribers. Thank you all very much. Yeah, man, I feel good to say. So peace and love, man. I'll talk to you guys soon.